Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Happy Sunday. We have so many topics to cover today. Let's get right to it. So the first topic we're going to cover today is the fact that Zara Tyndall and her husband had another baby and there was a lot of drama because apparently she went into labor and they couldn't get to the hospital in time and so she had the baby on the bathroom floor. But it all went well. The baby's healthy, she's healthy, everybody's happy and it all turned out well. And the Queen put out a statement that said, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh are delighted with the news and look forward to meeting their 10th great grandchild when circumstances allow. Not to be taken out of the headlines, of course, Harry and Meghan immediately put out a release that said that they have privately congratulated Zara Tyndall and her husband on the birth of their new son, Lucas Philip Tyndall. Well, that immediately caught my attention because how exactly was she in touch with them? Do you, I, I for one don't believe for a second that Zara would have answered the phone after the way Megan treated their grandmother. And everybody here knows that Harry and Megan don't do uh, social media. And I'm sure if they called, they probably didn't get an answer on the other end of the phone. The next topic I wanna touch on really quickly is about the apology that the Mail on Sunday was ordered to print after Megan Megan won in a summary judgment. Now we all know Megan was demanding the apology stay there for six months and it had to be in the same font and it had to be on the front page and she, you know, was asking for all of these things that were really ridiculous. So before that even got printed, the Mail on Sunday was told that first of all, they could print a smaller statement than what she requested. They could use a smaller font and it only had to stay for like a week, not the six months that Megan demanded. And now the letter of apology is completely on hold because the Mail on Sunday is mulling an appeal. It looks like they are going to appeal. So in researching this, I came across an article called The Mail on Sunday Sarcastic Apology to Meghan Markle. If you guys have not read this, you need to. In this article, they call the Duchess of Cambridge the true queen of people's hearts and talk about how ravishing she is. And they tell Meghan Markle that she's an entitled snowflake. They point out the fact that Megan is wearing a murderer's jewelry and that she has permanently traumatized palace staff. You guys need to look up this article and read it. It's fabulous. Next up, we're going to talk about the fact that Thomas Markle actually went to Oprah's house and dropped off a letter asking to be interviewed to give his side of the story. Do I think that Oprah's going to interview him? No, I don't, because it'll ruin the narrative that Harry and Meghan have going right now. So, no, I don't think that she's going to contact him. Nice try, though. I mean, he already pointed out that Meghan and Harry were scolding him over the phone while he was in the hospital after his heart attack. I mean, how ungrateful can two people get? But I'll tell you who is going to get his side of the story out, and that's Piers Morgan, Today, Sunday, he's going to go into the mail on Sunday and talk about everything. And I, you know him. He's not going to hold back. I am excited that he's doing this. I think it's fabulous. And please keep in mind, even if you don't like Piers Morgan, you have to respect him, whether you agree with him or not, because he, he made a statement. He meant it. He was attacked for it. He stuck by his words. He took the consequences. He owned it. He, I love this guy. Piers is absolutely landing on his feet. And you know who else I think will land on their feet? Sharon Osbourne. For those who don't know, she came to Piers Morgan's defense and stated, quote, I'm not a racist, neither is Piers racist, and I hate the fact of even saying I'm not a racist. It's a terrible, evil word to call anybody without knowledge of that. When one of her coworkers started in, she said, she said to her, tell me when you've heard him say racist things, educate me. And they couldn't. And as a result of this, Sharon Osbourne has now lost her position on this show, which, by the way, I will no longer be watching. And in case you're unaware, Good Morning Britain, their, their scores are dropping, dropping, dropping. People are not watching anymore. And I think that's going to happen to the talk as well. Good. I'm glad it's happening. For all of Meghan and Harry's talk about how nobody should be silenced, they sure are silencing anybody who has a negative opinion of them. Corporate is now feeling the heat, and I say yes! 
Next, we're going to touch on the fact that Harry took up a six-month role which examines misinformation on the internet. And people are going nuts over this since he and Megan are two of the biggest people putting out the misinformation. Telling people they were married three days earlier than their actual wedding in a private ceremony, which has already been debunked. They were aware that the headlines that CBS used had been doctored and were inaccurate, but they didn't demand that Oprah make them accurate. Just another example. Anything that makes them look better, they allow, even if it's inaccurate. I mean, people are saying that if you're going to do this kind of stuff, Harry should look over his own press releases and make sure that they make sense. His own press releases are being called gobbledygook, which is another word for word salad. I mean, Andrew Neal, Dan Wooten, they're all talking. And they're saying that maybe Harry should look at their interview with Oprah before he starts talking about misinformation. I mean, spot on, people. And I'm also going to say, while I'm on the topic of that interview again, that I thought Serena Williams was smarter than she is. She stated, quote, and I'm quoting, Megan is a great person and the epitome of strength and confidence and selflessness. And I know it's not easy. And you can see from the interview it wasn't easy. But she had so much poise and so much class. And she's so strong. And completely ignored the fact that multiple things had already been proven to be bald-faced lies. Like, you can support your friend, but why are you supporting somebody that you know is lying on national television? You know, Megan's going to come out and say the sky is purple with yellow stripes and Serena will agree with her. And now I have a spot on statement from one of my fabulous followers, Mrs. Cowbag. Well, Harry, all I can say about him is a leopard never changes his spots. He's an expert on race relations, and yet he's clearly a racist. He's a climate change advocate, yet flies around in private jets. He's an animal savior, yet thinks nothing about putting a bullet in their hearts. He talks about kindness, but is cruel to his elderly grandparents. He is an advocate for mental health, yet can't help his own wife and blames the royal family for his failings. Need I go on? Shame on you, Harry, for you're really not a nice person, are you? So for those of you who don't know who Rosa Parks is, you, you need to Google her, but I'm just gonna simply point out that Rosa Parks sat on the bus. She didn't burn the bus to the ground. People, this has got to come to an end at some point. And finally, we're there. It's Finn update time. So on this particular video, I'm going to show you that the dog discovered one of my cats who happens to be 15 years old. And here's what happened. And I apologize for the quality. I was looking down and watching them while trying to tape. I didn't realize. Okay, here we go. I don't think the cat likes this. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Good thing he's declawed, or there'd be some serious injury in this house today. Well, I think it's pretty obvious the cat wants absolutely nothing to do with Finn. And finally, I found this short little clip on the internet and thought it was hilarious. I hope you guys think it's funny too. And you're not going to tell me who had the conversation? <laughs> well, you guys, that was a lot of information and an extra long video clips of Finn today, but I really want your comments on what you think about all of this stuff. So make sure to leave your comments below. I assure you I read them all. Make sure you can email me. You, you know the email address is up in the box and I read every email that comes to me. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter and don't forget about that coffee fund. And as always, have a great day.